Great, so thank you all for joining us today. Welcome to Teaching and Research with Digital Collections, part three, Lessons and Learning Activity Design. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the slides for today in the chat, in case you haven't uh, seen that yet. And today, for the third and final installment of our three-part series, we will turn to the teaching side of things. So we have learned some fundamentals of IIIF digital collections and played with a few devices, both simple and complex. That is Mirador and the Universal Viewer, Nice, um, Exhibit.so, Stories with Three Eyes, and Scalar, not to mention a box of tools from friends um, from NC State uh, use IIIF image cropping tool, Liz Frischer's Manifest uh, Explorer, and others. Um, now we're going to see how to pull them together um, or pull all these things um, to work in a curricular context. So while everyone is getting settled, um, I'm one more time going to drop that uh, link to the slides in the chat. And you'll notice uh, that we've uh, put all our, we scripted our presentation for accessibility. And um, so you can see all of that in our notes within our slides. And just to say, shake things up, I'm Chris Gilman, a digital curriculum program coordinator with the UCLA Library Digital Library Program. And I'm Francesca Alvarezzi. I'm a digital research consultant for the Office of Advanced Research Computing. And I work closely with Nutri. For anyone who was unable to join the previous session about materials and collections, we'd like to provide links here to that slide deck, as well as a Zoom recording of the workshop, which you can view at your convenience. Today's session will move forward to discuss and demonstrate some uh, IIIF tools and practices in the curriculum, um, but, um, but we're just gonna do a, a, a brief recap to, um, uh, to remind you. And here are the slides and video for session two about the tools uh, and methods themselves. And so here's our agenda for today. Um, we'll share a bit about uh, the learning management system or LMS design group and the work we have been doing over the past year or so, Chris. Mm -hmm. And then we'll also share about the three unit template uh, we designed for Canvas as an approach to organizing teaching and learning with collections. Um, next, we'll demonstrate some specific lab activity templates that have been developed for collections-based teaching and are classroom tested. And uh, in the second half, we'll turn um, over the reins basically to faculty who have been incorporating IIIF-based assignments into their classes. And finally, we'll share some additional teaching resources across the campus so that you have an idea of where you can go for more teaching support. As a reminder for why we're here, we, as in the four of us at least, um, it is to promote and support the use of UCLA's remarkable, abundant digital collections linked here on the left, and to facilitate teaching and research with interoperable digital collections out there in the world by means of the web image delivery standard IIIF or International Image Interoperability Framework. Um, for anyone who's coming to this new, uh, we'd recommend um, uh, seeing our first and second recordings where we get into, um, into the, the weeds of what is IIIF, how does it work, what are its, um, what are its principles. The four of us are presenting, uh, presenting today are all regular participants of something called LMS Design Lab. This is an open collaborative of faculty, graduate students, librarians, technology specialists, instructional designers, and administrators. It has two components or meeting spaces. The first on the left is a collaboration course site in BruinLearn called LMS Design Lab 1A. It's, uh, it's numbered to allow for growth. Um, 
you will know if you can see the fine print that participants are each allocated their own module, which they can use kind of like an open cubicle in a shared workspace. On the right, for example, you can see Chen Ling's overview page and Chen Ling will be presenting with us. If we click in and scroll down past her bio and course listings, I'll do that now. Uh, we can see how many learning activities um, uh, are in her module. So this is a normal overview page for those of you who are used to Brew and Learn. Um, and then here is a, a long list of, of uh, modular content that, um, that Chen Ling uses in her courses um, um, that either that she is working on uh, with the support of others such as myself or items that she's copied here so that others can see what she has developed, borrow ideas or copy and adapt for their own use. In this way, the design lab supports lesson sharing in the actual substance of the activities in Bruinler. Uh, LMS Design Lab is also a regular informal weekly lunchtime meeting. Uh, this quarter, it's Tuesdays at noon, where any participants can discuss their curriculum uh, in development in the context of some big ideas, new tools and technologies, or shared interests. LMS Design Lab is open for anyone who would like to participate. It's a great way to get ongoing support and advance your technical and instructional design skills, and you get to work with the best of the best, UCLA's extraordinary staff and faculty like Francesca here. Just email me. Uh, my email is at the end of the presentation, cjgilman at library.ucla.edu if you'd like to join. Today, we're gonna demo uh, another product of our collaborative work, a custom three unit course template, which you can see on the right compared with the standard 10 module Brew and Learn course template on the left. We created this template with the support of LMS Transformation Academic Team, especially Greg Steinke, to more effectively scaffold hands-on engagement with digital collections content and digital project work in robust tools like the Stories Exhibit Scaler and Story Maps um, that we've seen. Um, three module units uh, are devoted to materials, methods and products in that order. Um, and they're combined with another uh, module for weekly topic, topical readings and discussions, that is with the regular stuff of conventional courses. It was in fact, a conversation with Francesca about commonalities between digital humanities course design and digital library program perspectives that led to the, this creation in the first place. Inside the three, uh, three unit course template is another innovation also derived from the standard Brew and Learn templates. Here in the middle, you can see the template for a unit lab activity. It is based upon the Brew and Learn discussion, which you'll see on the left. Um, it functions the same, but is adapted and expanded to include many additional content categories, which you can see here, starting uh, from the top concept activity, location, examples, et cetera. And note that the final two are adaptations of instructions and discuss in the standard template. So uh, for anyone who is assigned discussions, these are the main categories here in the, um, uh, in the standard discussion. Um, the intended effect is to enable a scrolling sequence of ideas, materials, tools and operational steps to generate a work product that students share and then collaborate on through commentary or further reuse of lab outputs. To show you how this work, I'll click into an activity in Muriel McClendon's history course on the right and scroll down. I'm gonna do that now. All right, so, it starts with a description of the activity, a, an embedded uh, video, um, embedded samples uh, in SMEs. So you can click in and view or look at different pages. Um, a series of instruction steps, 
Um, the materials that you'll be working with, these are links to IIIF content, um, and then the embedded, now familiar um, North Carolina State University cropping tool, um, and then instructions uh, to share and collaborate. And what we find most exciting about this is that then students in their, uh, in their responses have an opportunity both to share their work outputs here as crop details, and then plenty opportunity to comment on each other's posts. And in our experience, the students have been fantastic in making this um, digital uh, analysis activity a social process. And we find that that lab um, approach is very effective. Okay, so now just to go back to show you the template uh, itself, and its categories, concept, activity, location, examples, materials, et cetera. It's quite easy to edit. Each of these is a field. You can uh, embed content. Um, you can add uh, instructions here, and you can rearrange them uh, using a a nifty set of uh, design tools. Um, and let's see, effectively, you can edit uh, the, the headings and you can rearrange them in any, um, any sections that you don't need for your, um, for your activity. You simply um, delete um, and remove. Okay, so I think I'm going to swap out now. We're going to bring uh, Adelmar. Yeah. Uh, hi, hello. Uh, my name is Adelmar Ramirez, and um, I grew up in Ciudad Juarez in Mexico. Um, and well, my research has to do with the representation of violence. Um, a little bit of my background, I studied psychology and then creative writing at the University of Texas at El Paso. Uh, and I'm a faculty fellow right now in uh, UCLA. So, uh, thank you. Uh, the interest in learning about IIIF arose in the midst of designing an undergraduate course focused on the representation of gender violence and its intersectionality throughout Latin America. The final project consisted of a collaborative book in Scalar, a platform that enables the development of rich media projects and exhibitions. In an effort to diversify the pool of research materials, I helped students supplementing the IIIF collections from public domains, such as the UCLA Digital Library Collections, and Biblioteca Virtual Banco de la República de Colombia with images from David uh, Peinado, a photojournalist from Ciudad Juarez. In addition, students use IIIF related tools such as stories for visual annotation. These, uh, the links uh, contain some examples. Um, and so I'd like to show you uh, some works that students completed in the course that focused on uh, gender violence. And the first one was by a student of name uh, Derek Rivas. This photo was shared by uh, David Peinado. And let me, the student uh, took upon the uh, process of, the, of converting a triple IF or um, better said, uh, high resolution picture into a triple IF, uh, inserting comments on the details. And as you can see, um, the it's still very high resolution. Uh, oh, thank you. And this next case, uh, it's made by a student of name uh, Jacqueline Aquino, and she focused on feminist banners. Um, she actually got this triple image, but the 
library in Mexico uh, um, didn't make available the triple F link. So the student uh, also had the task of um, creating this triple F image uh, on the internet archive and uh, embedding some comments to better understand the, the banner and the significance of the banner. And lastly, oh, sorry, thank you. Um, the uh, student Tasha uh, Beerling, she did something very interesting because the, um, the same photographer had a uh, trip to uncover the war in Ukraine. So the project of the student compared the systematic violence in Mexico with the war. Um, and so um, you can appreciate that on the background, there's the, all the destructive um, buildings. And so it's a very uh, nice comparison of the colorful uh, playing area with, um, with the background and the ashes. Um, I just wanted to also mention that the um, I with a lot of help I created the document of with the steps of how to create uh, high defi high definition images to triple IF manifests and uh, Professor Cheng Ling who is going to talk in a in a minute she perfected that technique uh, and she's going to walk you through it uh, but also if you have any questions. Uh, you can email me also. My email is at, at the end of this presentation. Um, uh, I just, uh, I want to show you a couple. Well, one that is a, a personal experiment. I embedded a YouTube video uh, about the training of Border Patrol agents uh, in these photographs. And there's a manifest that shows uh, a couple of triple IF images. Let me close so many tabs. Um, so as you can see, this is, again, it's part of the same collection shared by uh, photographer David Peinado. And these were images that he took, but I uh, converted into triple IF. So there's that photo of uh, Border Patrol with the kids and this woman with uh, her child crossing the border to the United States. Um, and for the future, uh, this coming quarter, um, I'm going to teach a class on US Latinx uh, studies. And I'm uh, planning to use some of the resources offered by the digital library here at UCLA. Um, I want to uh, focus my class on activism. Uh, so for sure, I'm going to use uh, some of the triple IF images, uh, especially of the Chicano moratoriums. Um, as you can see, there's plenty of images covering the riots here in LA that I think that students are going to feel uh, very present, which is, happened is in our backyard. Um, and that's about it. Uh, now you're gonna hear from Professor Shingley. Thank you so much, Adam. I like to Hi everyone. Um, um, my name is Jenny Liu Zilami. Uh, I am a historian of medicine, and now I'm teaching uh, related courses at. Department of History and the Institute for Society and Genetics at UCLA. And today I would like to show you some learning examples uh, by using IIIF. So by working with instructional and curriculum designers like Chris and Francesca, I have been using the three unit course template in Canvas to teach uh, collection based courses that have allowed me to better implement collective uh, analysis and embodied learning experiences that engage tangible and visual uh, um, and virtual objects of inquiry. 
The collections that I have used as primary sources for students' projects, including UCLA Abarians and Medrid um, E. Mathias Botanical Garden, uh, Human Cadaver in the uh, Anatomy Lab, rare books and various collections at Biomedical Library Special Collections and UCLA Library Digital Collections. Such as these collections of pattern medicine trade cards that you see here, um, it consists of 238 physical cards and digi digitized image and metadata in our library. Uh, one of the advantages of these particular digital collections and all the uh, digital collections that existed in the UCLA digital collections are all made in IIIF. I'm able to take advantage of the quality and capacity of what IIIF can do to work with students to inquiry and uh, analyze these materials. I could show you the collections. This is the site um, uh, we start getting to. Um, like the previous collections, I'm going to show you um, these were the material that students use. As these visual materials are in IIIF, Students are able to use IIIF compatible tools and programs for analysis and scholarly work. For instance, Exhibit um, is one of the tools that have been mentioned uh, and was developed for the University of St. Andrews, Scotland, allow users to explore IIIF visual resources using deep uh, zooming capacities and practice annotation. In my class, uh, my students use sequence and caption detailed views of their selected pattern medicine trade cards and use the short form text fields to advance the narrative. This is an example of one student uh, using um, her uh, um, cards in exhibit. Um, the um, and the uh, um, compose a narrative by using the um, capacity of um, zoom in and then the corresponding text to explain what is the significance of the things that we are saying. And exhibit can um, comply with several. Uh, images so you can see the student use all three uh, three cards and in uh, on the front and back um, side of it. Other programs such as Scalar. Um, as mentioned also in our uh, workshop, uh, is a free Mellon funded open source scholarly digital authoring platform that accommodates IIIF and presents linked to rich media as evidence embedded directly in long term argumentative essays. So, using Scalar as the digital platform in students' final project allow the demonstration of the transferable knowledge in previous learning activities, such as sourcing high quality open source uh, content with metadata, importing linked media, in this case, IIIF images, a comparative analysis, visual object of uh, inquiry, and annotating details. So here is an example by the same student whose exhibit assignment that I just show you, and this is her work on um on scalar so you can see she is able to learn and utilize these cards and uh, um annotate um um to demonstrate as in her final project of what she has learned um, and achieve um, the information proficiencies that I set up for this course.
I also use Triple app in presenting my course materials and designing students' lab activities, such as this unit lab activities in my history of medicine course using Triple app viewing and cropping tool. You might find this look more familiar as demonstrated uh, by Chris earlier. Um, so I can show you the lesson. Again, it's in an image that is the topic of the lesson. And then you would also see exactly um, these presented uh, two images and the student were using the cropping tools. So here I would like to highlight that it is an advantage to have the frame and structure intact in curriculum design and adjust the course content accordingly. And it's really a, a privilege to work on and also share together um, in creating this curriculum content. Um, I already show this. Okay. Next, um, Adamar has been very generous to share with us his creation of how to turn these non um, triple IF images into triple IF um, content. And I learned so much from him, and then I also um, make it applied into my course. And here is the course that I am teaching right now on um, vaccination. And uh, students were using the uh, biomedical library special collections as their primary sources. But unfortunately, most of the content were not in IIIF. So with permission allowed, they were able to um, use uh, uh, Internet Archive to turn all, all these images into triple IF. So I create a lesson for them to follow how to create um, uh, a triple IF images based on what they have got from the special collection. So here I'm just quickly uh, make an example. So for instance, they, they have taken a photograph in their phone um, and then they are just in the computer to the suitable size and the resolution. They can upload it to Internet Archive after they create their account and they uh, upload it. Once they upload it, you will see a public uh, viewable uh, page such as this. So this is this is just an example, and you will see uh, there is a uh, Internet Archive URL and also these metadata that have been filled out uh, when uploading the uh, the photographs. And with this capacity of um, learning from um, the triple IF, we can. Uh, actually manipulate the URL and make these image and become a triple IF images that we can utilize for the uh, for the later use. So we learned this in the previous workshop uh, already. So um, if I manipulate the URL by putting some extra words, and you will find these scripts already in the previous uh, slides in the last workshop. So after the identifier, I just add um, the description for these different regions that indicate the function of the URL. And the format is PJF. And now you have an URL uh, uh, that is triple IF image URL, and you can use this for further use. You can also uh, generate um, manifest JSON code 
by using these um, uh, URL. So here we just need to get something after the identifier. So we don't need all these now. We just need to put manifest dot JSON. Okay, and then you see the code here, but most preciously, we have got the manifest URL over here. We can use for later for many other things that we have learned in this workshop. Okay, here, Francesca is gonna show her thoughts. And I should pause here maybe before, um, just to double check, are there any questions for Chen Lin or Adelmar? No questions yet? Okay, please do let us know if you have questions. So I, I like wearing many hats. So when I'm not assisting faculty with their digital research needs through my work in OR, you can often find me teaching BH 101, Introduction to Digital Humanities, which I've been teaching in the spring. Um, and then uh, this sort of follows a very similar format to the three unit template, which Chris was talking about earlier and our discussions were really fruitful in the beginning of the LMS design uh, lab to think about that three unit template and um, the DH program, um, what we do there and how those things overlap. Um, but I use the three unit template specifically in my digital curation capstone course for the DH program. And so I'm gonna share a little bit of that now. So in this course, students learn the fundamentals of curation by working with UCLA's digital collections. Last year, a small group of students and myself focused on the James Arkatoff photographic archive of jazz musicians performing in Los Angeles. These students became familiar with the entire collection, uh, then selected and researched related themes, designed an exhibition layout, wrote sections and wall, uh, wall labels, wall text, and planned a launch of the exhibition, the virtual exhibition. So in addition, students learned how to build a 3D environment for the works to be displayed, and they use Mozilla Hubs and Spoke as a web VR platform for the exhibition. I just wanted to give you a little bit about the background of the course before we jumped into the IIIFU. So since I introduced my students to the fundamentals of IIIF within the second and third weeks of the course, um, during which I'm assisting them with close looking exercises. So they are learning how to explore digital collections and identify key themes, uh, persons of interest, outliers and the like. Um, after introducing them um, to IIIF, then we introduce Mirador. Um, and I provide them with an assignment that asks them to use Mirador to create groupings of materials they're interested in and to write a paragraph that explains their selections and provides resources to demonstrate the research they've started to support their selections. Along with submitting their JSON code that we just saw um, uh, Chen Ling uh, presented, right? So they have a, a set of JSON code that they get out of Mirador that allows me to see the, the various groupings that they've created. I ask students to describe those selections. And I asked them things like, what aesthetics or topical choices shaped your selections? Did you make any exclusions? And if so, why? Are there certain aspects of your selection that you want to highlight? Uh, how do you envision your selection connecting with the topics we've discussed thus far? What is, the mis what is missing or other material that you would want to support or enhance this selection? I also invite them to pose questions regarding aspects that they would like feedback on. And I do let them know that they can submit more than one set of selections um, if they'd like. So in, in that case, I just ask um, that they be clear in their posts if they envision con uh, connections between them, 
and what those are. And then I ask them to comment on each other's work. So my guidance for this is to be constructive, supportive, and look for connections and ways to collaborate. I ask them to provide productive reflections, feedback, and resources to help develop the material. And I encourage them to ask questions and pose uh, or propose possible changes or ways to adapt to connect across uh, shared interests and ideas that their classmates are putting forward. And this assignment was really effective. I created a, um, it really created a great dialogue uh, across, uh, across the members of the course. And I really, uh, it really helps students narrow down what works they wanted to use and the themes that they wanted to address within the exhibition itself. So before we end, we wanted to share some additional resources curated and provided by Caroline Kong from the Center for the Advancement of Teaching, or CAP. Um, on the first Thursdays and third Thursdays of the month at 12 p.m., you can gather with others to discuss all things related to teaching and learning. Um, so if you like what you've seen here today and you wanna do more of it, um, please join our LMS design group and also think about jo joining this group. There's also a UCLA teaching substack that you can check out and also contribute to. So Caroline Kong runs that. Um, and so if you're working on a particular tool and you want to share it out, this is a great resource um, to be able to publish that out to share with colleagues, but also to mine for yourself and your own teaching. And then finally, you can participate in an instructional support uh, story swap if you want to continue this sort of one-on-one -on -one conversation with colleagues. Um, and with that, I'm going to have Chris come back up and join me up here. Anything else to add to these resources, Chris? Um, i just like to add one, uh, one note. Um, uh, Scalar is a pretty complex authoring tool um, and uh, integrating it with um, uh, with uh, course instruction is a challenge. Um, Chen Ling, um, we estimated approximately how many student essays in your courses that you've um, supported so far? I might have something between 500 and 600. Um, that is uh, an astounding number. Um, and first I'd say it's a testament to Chen Ling's um, uh, teaching abilities. Um, but I also think um, that the three unit template um, and the scaffolding of uh, student learning in sequence by acquainting them with the materials, by teaching them how to annotate using simpler, smaller tools like stories and exhibits um, uh, was uh, very effective. So by the time the students got to authoring and scalar in the third unit of the course, they were well prepared and well organized uh, to get to work. Um, so in that sense, doing this type of work um, I, uh, requires a little bit of um, uh, learning and design ahead of time, but it pays off uh, in the implementation of the course um, and, the, um, and the outcomes are extraordinary. Um, so once again, I would encourage um, uh, anyone um, uh, to reach out, um, join up. Um, uh, we uh, really benefit uh, greatly from having um, uh, faculty like Adelmar and, uh, and Chen Ling, um, as well as others uh, like Francesca, like um, uh, Caroline Kong, others who participate um, to help out in this, uh, in this informal um, uh, support group. So um, with that, um, thank you for participating in this workshop series. Um, uh, again, we'd like to ask if there are any questions or comments, uh, we'll give a, a little bit of time for that. And note that we will be posting this final video on the OARC YouTube channel later this week.